we saw Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says the anointing can remove all the burdens and destroy all the yokes right so already we have discussed uh, many times about the uh, when you talk about the anointing the anointing is the burden removing and yoke destroying power of God right so that's what we are uh, continually doing and uh, so I have covered quite a lot last week we were discussing about uh, the anointing bestows favor from man and also from God so if you uh, need favor the anointing can bring it <laughs> in our lives uh, sometimes we need favor from people's eyes favor from God's eyes uh, wherever we are whatever we do if we have favor that we are receiving extra benefit uh, without any struggle we can get through so the anointing can bring favor right so today we are going to do uh, one more thing the anointing adds divine extra to your best right the anointing adds divine extra to your best uh, it's something with our ability we'll be able to do with our talent with our knowledge and uh, we will be able to do the best what we can do right when the divine ability comes which is the anointing that will give you extra boost whatever you cannot do the anointing will help you to do i I was thinking about when I was reading this passage you know the life uh, David's life was really interesting uh, one of the thing David is a man uh, even from a young age I think at the age of 16 or something like that he was looking after the father's sheep and uh, he always carried an instrument with him, string instruments just to sing and uh, pray. But the Bible records uh, he used to sing praises to God and worshiping God continually. That's one of the best things what David was able to do. He was young, looking out of father's sheep. But in the meantime, he used to play the music and sing praises to God. The full of psalm, actually, if you go through, even when the enemy comes against him, he used to sing a song. <laughs> That's the interesting part. The place where you cannot sing, he sings a song. He worship God. And then he turned that story into a song or to a praise and worship. Then when I was meditating on that, the Lord reminded me something. As a young boy, he was really, uh, as I said, while he was looking out of a sheep, he was continually worshipping God, praising God, all the time praising, praising, praising. You know, the praise will give you the strength and power for your life. Even in David's life, and when he came to uh, challenge Goliath, he was telling King Saul, one time a king came, uh, I mean a lion came against me with the bare hand I tore it <laughs> into two. One time a bear came to, uh, uh, against me uh, the, to steal the sheep but I was able to tear it uh, into two, the bear with the empty hand. He's a young boy. First of all, he had the boldness to face it and also he may have a strength to uh, fight against a lion or a bear whatever it is but I believe strongly the way he was explaining to King Saul he was having extra ability given by God to him and he said one of the things when he was facing Goliath, before he went to Goliath, face Goliath, he said, uh, 
He was telling Goliath one thing. You are coming against me. But you are not coming against me. You are coming against God of Israel. You are not coming against young lad. You are coming against God of Israel. I am a covenant person with God. So you may be a big person, big statue. I mean, you may have big figure. Everything, I am not worried about that. And then, and I was reading uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. It's explained, very interesting how, uh, just turn there. Mm. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 3 says, The Philistines stood on a mountain on mm. one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named mm. Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And think about 16-year-old boy. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail mm. and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. Mm. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Okay, look at this. Now the armor, the sword and the spear, everything, the way he was dressed, helmet, the weight alone, uh, it, it speaks about uh, something about this man. Right? I think when you say six cubits tall, height, that is nearly about nine foot tall. Nine foot man challenging a young boy. Right? If you go and read it continually, physically, David cannot face Goliath, physically speaking. But in this place, David is already clever on something which is capable <laughs> right he's clever on that he has the ability with that he says i can challenge no problem but he's coming with the sword and the spear and everything even the armor bearer is coming in front of him and he was ready to fight anybody i'm willing to fight david's side david is going with the empty hand Empty hand in his hand, no sword. Even King Saul was trying to uh, dress him with a, a soldier's suit. <laughs> it was not fitting him. He said, I'm not used to this uh, thing. I'll just go. Bare body, only thing he is having a catapult in the hand. He's very good at catapult. But he is wearing a helmet and uh, with, you know, with the stone, how big you can have, right? And he took five stones, the Bible says, and uh, some theological, I mean, uh, scholars are saying he had four more brothers. Goliath had four brothers. So with Goliath, five people. And he's willing to fight. He knows when brother die, definitely the other brothers will come. He is keeping each person one stone. He had an ability to throw rightly to anybody. He, he was sure that he can kill him. But the problem is, he is not having sword in the hand. Only he was having the catapult and five stones. Unfortunately, even though Goliath was dressed well with the arm, uh, I mean, all the, uh, with the uniform to fight. 
he was fully protected with the uh, armor but the only one opportunity he david had goliath helmet fully covering the head but this place there's a round hole they made it that way but david had a uh, ability to throw but the interesting part he was throwing he had the ability but divine ability was given to him extra uh, divine extra to given to david to hit right on the spot here so when the stone went and hit on the forehead goliath fainted and fell down even to cut his neck he didn't have a sword he has to take goliath sword and cut him which i which speak here you can have a ability you can have a talent you can have knowledge you can do something you may have some uh, ability in your own life but when the anointing comes upon you the divine extra you can do it right so you don't need to worry only thing god is expecting you to spend time with him how do you get the anointing only by prayer that prayer also even this morning i was talking um, most of the time but we got used to we always lord when we go to god we say lord i have this need and that need and give me give me give me give me give me all the time give me the church is uh, learn to ask god all the time they are probably whatever they they have need even the preachers they always taught the people uh, just to meet the people's need believe god god can meet god can do he is a miracle working god he can do wonderful things this and that and signs and wonders always talk about the miracle 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 and people are led by those the instruction never teach the people to spend time in the presence of god if you want divine extra in your life if you want divine favor in your life definitely you have to spend time in the presence of god that's the only way right so the if you spend time in the presence of god that song was really nice your presence is heaven to me if anybody longing for his presence always there will be benefit coming from heaven most of the people they lose it because they don't want to spend time in prayer even if they go to pray always need conscious always need 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 right but the thing is it works the other way around if you learned i was asking the other day uh, in one of the congregation when you go to god when did you last time you asked uh, asked the lord lord i want you more of you <laughs> most of the time what we do we think about ourselves and we always ask give me give me this and that and all those things is there anyone really willing to ask god lord i want more of you i want to see your face i want to spend time with you lord speak to me i want to hear your voice god will speak to those type of people and will give them help you see is a good example he was a uh, uh i was really thrilled about to read uh, david's story in the field he was looking out the sheep but in the meantime he was praising and worshiping god all the time once when you learn that uh, thing in your life praising and worshiping god you are automatically filling yourself with the divine strength once when the praise and worship comes out of your mouth you are filled with his strength so when you are filled with god's strength any challenges you can face and win the battle yeah satan can bring all the challenges against you but if you are full of the holy spirit you can win the battle right because you may have ability with god's favor he will aid his ability to your ability then you will have extra power to work anything right and uh, the other area i want to discuss 
The anointing makes you to attain highest that is beyond your ability. Same thing, almost similar. You know, uh, when you spend time in the presence of God, right, the anointing comes upon you. So when the anointing comes upon you, that will make you to attain highest that is beyond your ability. You, have, you may have ability, but the anointing will take you to higher level. That's a good example with Joseph's life. Right? Before that, I just want to read one more scripture from the word of God. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, mm. let him ask of God, uh. who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives liberally? God will never limit anything if you are sincere and if you ask uh, by faith, he will give it to you. Right? So we can see in the Bible, there are so many places, so many uh, people of God who was uh, actually, we can say, those who did not do well in their life, but God brought them into higher position, higher level. Think about uh, Peter's life. Peter was a fisherman. Peter was a fisherman. Once when he started, when he followed Jesus, after the resurrection, we can see, his life, when, as long as he was following Jesus, uh, he was not shown much. Very, here and there, one or two, we call, call him forward Peter, because he jumps and asks questions and jump and answer any question Jesus asks. Uh, therefore, we, say, we, to, uh, we tell him, uh, we call him forward Peter, jumping for everything. But on the other side, after the resurrection, even though he was a fisherman, on the day of Pentecost, after receiving baptism of the Holy Spirit, the anointing came upon him and uh, he was able to do great thing. First of all, his first sermon, his first sermon was really very powerful. He didn't prepare him because he was not an educated man. He was a fisherman. But he was able to preach a good sermon in order to touch every high authority, those who put Jesus to death against them. The power came upon him, the anointing came upon him, but he was doing something which he couldn't do before. And another reason, if you read Acts chapter 3, uh, Peter and John, you know, uh, they were going to the temple. There was a man who was crippled from the mother's womb. He was begging at the gate of beautiful. I was thinking, Jesus, I've gone to the temple many times, but that man didn't get healed by Jesus. I was really puzzled sometimes when I read, because Jesus was going to the temple all the time, but he never, Healed him. I don't know why. But when Peter and John went, uh, while they were going, this man was as usual, he was begging. He was asking something from them. Peter and John, the Bible said both, they said, silver and gold we have none. But something I have, I can give it to you. 
And then he said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The Bible says that man rise up and then uh, leaping, jumping and leaping. And then he was praising God and he entered the temple with these two disciples. Peter couldn't do before. But when the anointing came upon him, he was able to do something great. And then when you read uh, continually, even the hierarchies, the authorities, they were puzzled. They were really shocked. How did he, they were asking continually, how did you heal this man? How did you, with what power did you heal? They were shocked. They, were, they thought, oh, Jesus was doing all the miracles. He, he, was a, he was a really a troublemaker. He was a problem for us. So they, uh, we, now he can be put him to death. Now he's a, no more. And they thought they can peacefully settle down. But here, God raised Peter, who was a fisherman, mostly uneducated. And God took him and started using him. And these people thought, we thought only with Jesus we can uh, close a chapter. But here, God is using another man. They don't know what to do. What I'm saying, Peter had the ability to do there are a whole lot of things he was able to do. But these things he couldn't do before. But the anointing came upon him. So with the anointing, he was able to uh, heal the cripple. The Bible also says, uh, when Peter was walking on the street, with the shade, people got healed. That's a divine extra working in his life. So even by the Bible says, God is not a respecter of person. If he can use Peter, he can use you and me. Only thing, the Bible says, these disciples, even though they followed Jesus, they had separate time with God. Right? I can say, not during the time when Jesus was on the earth. One of the scriptures say, Bible says uh, about Paul, uh, as he was going to the place where usually he prays. They had time, they had separated. In other words, they were actually uh, made a point to set a time to pray. The Bible says, by the side of the river, they were praying continually daily. As he was going there, Bible saying, uh, as usually uh, they were going there, especially Paul, while he was going there, there was a uh, girl who was a palm reader. And then Apostle Paul, he cast out the devil out of her. Right? Uh, what I'm saying, these people, they spend time in the presence of God. And also before the day of Pentecost, Jesus said, Terry here in Jerusalem, don't go anywhere. Until the day of Pentecost. When you were, I, you know, when I, when I was meditating this thing, it really touched my heart. Jesus said, wait till the Holy Spirit comes. They all gathered, 120 people, they gathered in the upper room, they were waiting for the Holy Spirit. Waiting mean, if you know, now we know what is waiting mean. But they didn't have any clue about the Holy Spirit. Only thing, the word which came out of uh, Jesus' mouth, and uh, they believed it, and they were waiting. They don't know what, they, what is going to happen to them. Just blindly, they were waiting. They don't know about the Holy Spirit at all. They were waiting. I don't know what type of conversation must have gone there. They were waiting and waiting, one day, two day, three day, four day. The days were going. But still they are waiting. Right? So the day of Pentecost came. They, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. 
They have to wait many days before they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now today what I'm saying, the same waiting pattern, if we apply to our life, after being born again, after receiving baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you, if you practice ourselves to wait upon the Lord, definitely we can be filled with the anointing. When the anointing comes upon us, it will add extra to our ability. Whatever we can't do, the anointing will take you to the level. Amen? It's a waiting part which brings the power. And uh, so we have ability, but the, when the anointing comes, that will take you to beyond the ability. Whatever you cannot do. Think about for a while, a uh, moment. Life of Joseph's life, right? He's another man. And uh, he was father's favorite. He was at home, and the brothers have gone to take care of the sheep. So he was sold as a slave uh, to uh, Ismail, and then he was sold to uh, Potiphar, and then he was a slave there. But the Bible says Joseph was Joseph always had fear of God in his life. Fear of God always bring wisdom to anybody. The Bible that's a it say the fear of God always bring wisdom. Right? And the, when the wisdom comes in, whatever you cannot handle, you'll be able to handle. Now here, uh, Pharaoh's people are there. If there's any problem, the counselors, even magicians, everybody's uh, with him. In their life, whatever he needed, Pharaoh needed, everything was provided. So here, the magicians are there all the time, whatever spiritual side they want to meet it. So these fellows are there already. They were able, they were able to do it and they, they are done. Uh, many can, we can see uh, in the life of, um, when you read uh, Moses' life, we can see they were having the similar power, similar challenge, everything. But when uh, the king, had a dream, two dreams actually. These people, they couldn't interpret for him. But the news went from the prison where Joseph was put to, just to uh, cut down the sto story short. They said, there's a young boy he will be able to interpret your dream. Then king ordered, bring him. So the, when Joseph was brought before king, he said, I saw a dream and uh, none of our magicians couldn't interpret for me. So then Joseph was, even in that place he said, he was uh, put, uh, I mean, he was lifting God's name high. He said, I cannot interpret, but God whom I am worshipping, he, he can give the interpretation for your dream. He was putting God in the first place and he was praising God there. And then he said, in a short while, he said, this is a dream, this is a dream, this is an interpretation. And he was clearly said. And then, I was, I really liked it. The way Joseph handled the situation, he was very wise. Very wise. He said, uh, you choose a man who is very wise and to take care of everything according to the dream. Then the king thought, there is no wiser man than you. You are the first per good person to handle everything. All the <clears throat> famine, you can handle it without any problem. The way you interpret it, you do it. Think about it. a young boy who was a slave, but God gave the ability 
for him to interpret the dream and then God gave the wisdom to handle all the uh, uh, what do you call all the wealth of Egypt and to use it for the famine day food everything nobody uh, run out in anything that's called wisdom that wisdom comes with the anointing extra ability God was adding in his life right so you see uh, and also we can see he was brought to higher place he was a really a prime minister you can call it he was a prime minister of Egypt even though he was a slave boy how does it uh, got it only way he had the fear of God and secondly God gave him the favor and also I believe he if he has a fear of God he must have spent timing with God in his presence the anointing comes in when the anointing works in any places God will take you to a higher place amen so that is the only key right the other area I want to discuss today uh, the anointing changes your status the anointing will change your status right uh, it's also like almost similar what are the status you may be but if you learn to spend time in the presence of God God can change status in other words God can take you higher God can take you God can promote you take higher everything comes under anointing the people of God doesn't need to stay low in any area. The Bible also already given promise, you will be the head, not the tail. You, give, you will go over, never under. Why? Because God's favor works in you and the anointing, when the anointing comes upon a life, that anointing will carry you whatever you may be even higher level. Status will change right status will change the other area I want to cover because I want to finish it next week I'm going to cover a uh, different side the other thing is when the anointing comes upon you it gives you unique deliverance unique deliverance lots of people are uh, under bondage lots of people are Satan has put them into prison like a lifestyle they are no free they don't have any freedom they are bound in uh, sometimes they are bound to certain habits they are bound to sometimes uh, uh, maybe we can call it nature there are so many areas uh, you can work out and say people are really bound they are not free right satan has put different different people in different different level uh, according to their uh, weaknesses right we don't need to be like that way we can be free by the anointing because uh, deliverance comes from god deliverance you can have that's the reason the bible say already we read isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says uh, anointing is a burden removing yoke destroying what are the yokes Satan has put on, put, on, put on you? What are the burden you are carrying? What is pressurizing you? Everything can be destroyed because of the anointing. So here, if you need extra unique deliverance in something, some way, whatever it is, he is able. The anointing is able. Sometimes we are bound, we don't know what to do. Even we don't know we are bound sometimes. That's a sad part. People are bound, but they don't know they are bound by the devil. They put on with the thing and then they continue, they carry on with their journey. But we need deliverance. But the anointing can deliver you. Okay. The other area, uh, this is a, a good one. The anointing gives you uncommon promotion. Very important, right? The Bible says the promotion doesn't come from the east or west. The promotion comes from God. Amen. The promotion comes from God. 
So, uh, if you learn to spend time in the presence of God, you will be full of the anointing. When the anointing works in your life, always uncommon promotion comes. We don't need to struggle. Sometimes what we do, in order to get promotion, uh, especially the worldly people, uh, they will try to knock their head and try to come to that chair. That, that's worldly style. But we don't need to do that. God knows how to take you to a higher place. Promotion comes from God. If it comes from God, nobody can put you down. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I must have shared with you earlier, my personal life, when we were in Australia, the first time I was working in, uh, in my life, so when I was in Australia, I had to work because I had to support my family. So first thing, first job I got as a cleaning uh, man, floor cleaner. Within short period, I became a cleaning supervisor. After becoming a cleaning supervisor, within one week, I became an assistant manager for a, a company. Uncommon promotion. I learned work from all the, all the staffs are white. Only I was black. I learned the work from them. One week later, I was supervising them. That is called uncommon Promotion. <laughs> yeah. And my salary went uh, much higher than what I was earning. That's the way it has to be done. But the only thing we both did, we prayed to God. That also, I never expected for me to, for me to get the promotion that way. I never expected. The manager was asking, Manual, can you manage? I thought in Sri Lanka, uh, we say if anything can, uh, if you learn, yes, sir, we can manage. I can manage. Then he said, then you are the manager for this. Uh, uh, you are, uh, I will be leaving soon. So you will be taking care. And the company offered me the manager post. Because of the ministry, I left everything and came here. But I'm saying, if you learn to believe God, if you learn to spend time with God, you will be full of the Holy Spirit. The anointing will be overflowing through your life. That when the anointing comes upon any place, uncommon promotion will definitely come. You don't need to struggle to get promotion. The anointing can take you to that level. Amen. Key, learn to, if you learn to spend time in the presence of God. Learn to. When I say presence of God, I'm not talking about five minutes prayer, ten minutes prayer. You talk to God, you wait upon Him until He talks to you. I don't know how long it takes, but it's your responsibility to hear His voice. That is the type of communication you must build in your life. Once when you do that, what happens? Automatically the anointing comes upon. Right? In the beginning, it maybe seems to be like hard, but after a while, you can't leave His presence without talking to Him. That is the one that brings uncommon promotion to you. The next area, uh, the anointing gives you unique acceptance. Okay? Sometimes people say, they don't respect me, they don't take me, they, don't, they never invite me, this and that. People will complain all the time. They, they don't recognize me. You know, have you heard that, uh, that about all? Right? But if you are full of the Holy Spirit, if you spend time in the presence of God, really uh, unique, it won't happen to everybody. For you especially, they will accept. Yeah. I was thinking even recently, uh, one of the big organization, they were asking me to come and uh, help them. They say, even you don't come and join us, but still you can be an advisor for our uh, ministry. It's a big ministry. 
I was thinking, what on earth these people are talking about? I'm not bragging about myself. But I think, I believe, the anointing will place you to such a place. Unique acceptance. Unexpected, uh, in the unexpected places, God will place you in such a way. People will honor you, respect you, and uh, some, uh, they will accept you in such a way as a godly person, as a leader, as a teacher. I don't know whatever it is, but the people will be able to accept you in a unique way. That comes only by anointing. You see all the powerful preachers all over the world. You take anybody, they get the acceptance. Why? Because of the anointing. Right? So it doesn't make a difference between child of God, anybody. You can be a believer, but still you will be accepted by people. Unique acceptance. Sometimes you may think, oh, people won't talk, take notice of me. No, no, no. Spend time in the prison, you will be noticed by everybody. Amen. The other area I want to talk about, when the anointing makes you cup to run over, that's what happened to David. Right? If you spend time in the presence of God, if you learn to praise and worship God all the time, your cup will overflow. Psalm 23, that's what he was talking about. Your cup will run over. Guess what? This Psalm 23 is talking about the cup being your inner man. When the inner man is drying, last week I, I was talking about that. When the inner man dries up, that's what I was talking about spiritual starvation, spiritual, spiritually lots of people are dried. When that takes place, that comes because of the, uh, they are not having any fellowship with God, right? If that happens, his life is like waste life. But here, the person who keeps communication Fellowship with the Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, always their cups will run over. The inner man will get day by day stronger and stronger when you spend time in the presence of God. Anything, can, anything in the world cannot touch you or cannot shake you. Because your inner man is strong. People are sometimes, when you talk about the sickness and disease, they are shaken. They are a fear. They're full of, you know, uh, worries and everything they'll talk about. But if the inner man is strong, you, nobody can shake you because you're so strong. For that only, when you spend time in the presence of God, your inner man will full of the Holy Spirit. That's what he's talking about. Your cup will run over. Anybody's cup runs over, they are not shaken by, touched by the devil. Devil cannot keep them in his presence. Why? The anointing will destroy all the prison doors and you'll be free. Right? The last one I want to talk about is the anointing guarantees your protection. Okay? The anointing will guarantee your protection. Lots of Christians are dying. Why? No anointing. No protection of God. We say, Oh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, we say. But how much, we, just for namesake, you can, you can say, but are you really spending time in the presence of God? Are you under the shack? Are you under the covering of the shadow of the Almighty God? He that dwelleth in the secret place, dwelling means you just uh, make home his presence. In other words, Make time, make give time in God's presence. Once when you learn to the actually the dwelling, the word dwell means you live in the presence of God. The man who lives in the presence of God always El Shaddai, Almighty God's shadow will be over them. Satan cannot touch, 
people cannot touch in any way, any form. Divine protection will be there for a pers anointed person all the time. Amen. So the anointing part is very, very important for a Christian. I'm, I'm even uh, last week I think I talked about. Don't learn to live a religious life. Religious life is a distracted life. Learn to live a spiritual life. Spiritual life will bring all the benefits. Whatever I'm talking about now. Spiritual life is different. Religious life mean, I said last week also, religious people, they come to Sunday, service, sing some songs, give tithes and offering, listen to the sermon, and go home. Monday to Friday, uh, Monday to Saturday, what is your life? That makes a difference. Religious people, only Sunday, they can, they'll take care. But Monday to Saturday, they live a totally different life. Spiritual people, Monday to Sunday, all the time, the same way they live. That is called spiritual life. Spending time with the Father, spending time in the presence of God, full of the Holy Spirit, that is a spiritual life. Spirit of God talk to you, you talk to Him. It's a really divine communication and fellowship. You don't uh, think that you're wasting time in the presence of God. You long for that presence. You love to go to his presence. If you build up that lifestyle, the, all these benefits you can enjoy continually. Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Praise your Father. Worship you, Lord. Glorify your name of Master. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, once again come to Lord in Jesus' name. Father God, your word says, when your word goes out, never return a void. It will accomplish the purposes, whatever you sent for. Even this day, Father God, the thing, the area, whatever we discuss, all the benefits, we can have it through the anointing. When the anointing comes upon our lives, we know, Father, all the burdens will be removed. All the yokes will be destroyed. Even Father, I commit each and every individual those are seated here. I don't know what type of burden they are carrying. I don't know what type of yoke they are carrying, Father. But we believe, according to your word, once when we learn to spend time in your presence, that we will be full, we will be we will be able to have overflowing anointing in our lives. When the anointing comes, we know all the Satan's prison doors will be destroyed. Everything, whatever, we, whatever Satan brings us against us, will be completely wiped out and we can be set free and we can live a liberal life, victorious life of Father. This morning I pray and ask a blessing upon your children to enjoy the life whatever we are discussing right now. Especially Father, the area of protection, I release it upon your children. No weapons formed against them shall prosper. I pray that your hand will take care of each and every one of them continually Father. But help them to spend time with you. Give them the desire to spend time with you, that they'll be able to enjoy your company and your anointing. We give you all the praise and glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. May God bless you.